Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everyone, welcome back. We continue with scattering and tunneling with our last example, a barrier of finite width. So, what do we mean by that? Well, you can see the potential. For x less than zero, it's exactly what we've seen in the previous two examples. It's constant and it's zero. Actually, the previous example. The first example was a constant potential. Now, for zero less than x less than a, v is positive and constant. And for x greater than a, v is zero again. So it's a little rectangle. Potential is zero to the left and to the right of the rectangle. So from this, you're going to see what I mean or what I meant when I said that the constant potential we considered earlier is really the basic example which, which everything is going to be built on. So we're only going to consider the case zero less than e, less than v. Okay, because that's the classically forbidden case. We want to see a wave incident on the uh, finite barrier, and we want to see what happens to it. Last time, when we considered the step, we saw that uh, some probability could leak into the step. It couldn't go all the way through because the step was infinite for x greater than zero. But now this is a finite potential, or sorry, a finite barrier, and it's po possible for there to be transmission out the other side, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So the rules for solving these problems are exactly the same. We write down the wave function in the th the three different regions. Well, now we have three different regions uh, taking into account certain physical considerations that may arise. So, I'll say what I mean by that in a second. For x less than zero, that's exactly the same form of the wave function that we had previously. Okay, We have a rightward moving wave and a leftward moving wave that could model reflection. Inside the barrier, that's why we're considering 0 less than e less than v, we have this form, a e to the minus k1 tilde x plus b1, a1, e to the minus k1 tilde x, plus b1, e to the k1 tilde x. We don't have to worry about uh, the, any of these terms blowing up because it's only on a finite interval. Now, the last region, there's no potential, v equals 0, and it's exactly the same form as the first in the region x less than 0, is what I meant. And so we have these three different forms. Now, what do we want to do? Well, we want to discuss reflection and transmission. Reflection off the left-hand side of the um, barrier and transmission through the right-hand side. Now, before I get to that, I said, uh, in analogy with last time, B2 is zero since once we go through the barrier, we don't have any leftward moving particles. Well, there's a typo here. Actually, I fixed the typo. Sorry, in your version. So yeah, there's a lot of, and not a lot, there's a few. Every typo I see is annoying. Um, 
that I'm fixing as we go along. I think it's mostly this chapter. This chapter has been an awful one for me to get rid of all the typos. But I think they're essentially all gone. There's no errors. I mean, this was technically an error. Uh, but I think in your version it says there is no wave moving to the right. Actually, that correspond, and that is true. Everything is moving to the left once we get to x greater than a. Okay. Now, reflection and transmission coefficients. In analogy with last time, this is the reflection coefficient from the left-hand side of the barrier. And this is due to the incident wave. And this is the transmission coefficient through the right-hand barrier, through the right-hand boundary of the barrier. And so this is what we want to look at and to, to compute. OK, what do you do? A lot of algebra need some guidance through this. Now we have two different boundaries where we have to match the wave function and its derivative across the boundary. And that's a lot of constants to have to deal with. I give you a little description here of the strategy. And then after some algebra, we end up with these expressions. Now, I have checked these a few times, but it's always possible for me to make errors. There are consistency checks along the way, but um, I urge you to check them, and we'll discuss them in the problem session, because there's a lot of interesting structure in these expressions. So they depend only on they, meaning the reflection coefficient and the transmission coefficient, depend only on the width of the barrier, A, and k0 and k1 tilde, the wave numbers for the wave going through and for the wave inside. Okay, this is pretty interesting. And we can explore a lot what that means, but the main thing is do the calculations. Write down the wave function in the three regions, match at the boundaries, find the coefficients, compute the reflection coefficient and the transmission coefficient. Now, what we see is that the transmission coefficient is not zero. I mean, it may be big, it may be small. We don't know. We haven't checked the size with specific values of the parameters. But this is what we refer to as quantum tunneling. We have transmission probability current through this barrier. Now you can check that r plus t reflection plus transmission equals 1. Now there's a few other things that you can do that I'm not going to go through in any detail here, but they may come up again in certain cases. You can look at limiting cases and what the reflection and transmission coefficient look like in limiting cases for certain combinations of the parameters. Okay, so that's scattering and tunneling. That's really all I wanted to do in terms of the course material in the chapter. There will be some problems that are set that allow us to explore these issues earlier. Um, the step potential, where the step is reversed and it becomes a ditch, is an interesting one that we will look at. Um, but 
when you're thinking about this, think about, just keep in mind, there's no, no matter how many different um, obstacles I put on the line, the strategy is very, is always the same. You want to write down what the wave function is in the different regions, match at the boundaries and with uh, first and second derivatives, and come up with the uh, coefficients that enable you to compute reflection and transmission coefficients for what you want to uh, describe. Reflection from what, transmission through what. Okay, so if you go back and think about it, that first example of the constant potential, you know, mo um, motion in a constant potential, the two different values of, of e greater than v, e less than v, that really gave you all the tools, that along with uh, continuity of um, the wave function and its derivative and constant probability current that you'd use in all of these examples. So we could come up with a lot of different things. The algebra gets pretty fierce because you have to match at every boundary and um, you know the, the constants just proliferate with the number of boundaries. But in principle, it can be done. This is essentially at the limit of what I expect you to do by hand. Okay, that is a good place to stop now. We finished with chapter two. In chapter three, we get some really fascinating concepts that arise when we start looking at the quantum theory of measurement. And that's when things really get quantum mechanical. Okay, I will leave you there and see you next time when we start chapter three. Bye.